Hello, I'm Chris and I quickly want to show you how to do a 3D transition on an image to make it look rather fancy without blocking out old browsers and without just doing it for the latest and greatest. So what we have here is an image of a cat with a caption under it. The HTML is pretty simple. It's a figure with an image inside and a fig caption. That is in HTML5 what we should, you should use to have an image with a description. That means though that still we have to have an alternative text in the image in case the photo can't be loaded or somebody can't see it. So alternative text, always a good idea. So this is the unstyled format. It's not quite sexy. We should do something else with that. So the first thing that I want to do is have the caption on top of the image and have the image a bit darker so you can read the caption much better. That is pretty simple to do. And that can be done in Internet Explorer 6 and all browsers as well, except for the opacity. But we find a way around that if you really want to, but let's not go into that. So in terms of positioning the uh, caption on top of the image, first we have to position the LI element with the image inside uh, relatively. This means anything that happens to be positioned later on will be relative to that rectangle that we have here, which we defined as 300 pixels and 200 pixels. We do list style non to get rid of the bullet point, and then we have a nice styling there. The caption itself is positioned absolutely, and in this case, left pic uh, 65 pixels from the left and 10 pixels from the bottom, which puts it actually here. So we could move that around if you wanted to, and you can play with that, to move it, for example, 20 pixels up but let's keep the 10 at the moment. I move it to 65 pixels to the left because I also gave it a width of 230. So that means it shifts it here and it still leaves a bit of things here. Fair enough. A border radius of five pixels gives it a nice round corner and a black background with an opacity of 0.4 makes it readable and actually makes the other image still shine through. Let's make this a bit darker though at 07 and all of a sudden you see it's much darker but the image is still shining through so that looks good. Looking good is one point but actually I'm covering the cat right now and I just want to make that sometimes available as the cat and when I roll over it it becomes more interactive. So this is what we do in the next step. So if I now roll over it here then the, uh, then the caption appears and if I roll out it hides again. So this is done with a normal hover effect in CSS, but a lot of people forget that some people don't actually have a mouse, so they use keyboard as well. So if I now do this with a keyboard here, you see that the effect actually works as well. So we've done that with using hover and also using focus. So let's take a look how that works. This is still styling for the uh, for the P and the uh, and the text in there, so it's a bit nicer. The interactive thing, the first thing you have to do is set an overflow of hidden on the main LI. So what we're doing, instead of positioning the, uh, the caption to 65 pixels, we now position it to 300 pixels, which is outside here. But we don't want to show it, so that's why we have overflow hidden. We give the image an opacity of 1, and, in the, uh, and we move it to like, 300 pixels here. And when you hover over the image, or when you focus on the image, we set the opacity, when, when you hover over the list item, or you hover over the, uh, set the focus on the list item, the image becomes an opacity of 0.4. So that gets darker when I now roll over it. And the same way, I'm moving the fig caption to 75 pixels on the left, rather than 300 pixels on the left. And this is how this is done, so this is the interactive part. In the next phase for newer browsers that actually support it, this would work for Internet Explorer 6 and all kinds of other things as well. We now want to make it smooth. So instead of just showing and hiding it quickly, you now that you see it fades out the image and it moves in and moves out the caption when I move over it. Again, this also works with a keyboard. So we have the interactive one here and the smooth one then moves in and out nicely. So the smooth thing is actually just a transition. So we have a transition for WebKit, we have a transition for Mozilla, Opera, Microsoft, and a transition for browsers in the future that don't need any of these prefixes anymore. So that's always what we should be doing, because then we don't have to worry about it when the next browser starts su supporting it. So WebKit was the first one to do it, and now Mozilla is doing it as well. I don't have to revisit my CSS anymore. It already does it for me. So this is smooth now, and it fades in and out, and this is nice. In the next step now, we want to do 3D transitions, in the last step actually. So now you can see, when I roll over it, or I highlight it with my keyboard, the, uh, the cat picture goes into the 3D space and gets folded up, whereas the caption still moves in from the left and the same thing. So how can you do this? 
Well, the first thing we have to do is give it a perspective. So now the 3D, which is again this list item here, now has a perspective of 800 pixels. This is a bit like putting a cube onto the Li element of 800 pixels and then position the Li in that cube in any which way you want. So what we do here, again for all the different browsers, is we transform the, uh, the image accordingly. And we only do that on hover. And we again have a transition on it that just does the same thing. So we didn't have to change anything there. So to see, uh, to, t to play with that a bit more, let's take out the hover here. So you can see that the image is positioned in space. So we rotate it at the y-axis of 50 degrees. I can do that simpler with like 10 degrees. And then you will see that the shifting doesn't happen as much. With 50 degrees and with, uh, with or 90 degrees, it would be completely invisible. So if I look at that, it's now shifting so much in space, it's not really uh, visible anymore for us. So 50 degrees was a nice way to actually rotate it in 3D space on the y-axis. We also tilted it a bit on the x-axis, only a slightly, like 10 degrees here. So if I would do 30 degrees on this one, it would shift it even more into space. And you also see that if we just had rotated, we would have a cut-off thing. So again, let's sit this back to the 10 degrees that we had originally. And let's uh, quickly comment this one out. Then you will see that the image itself doesn't do much. Hang on, there's a, there's a, oh, there we go. So if I reload this one now, you see that the image is cut off. So we rotated it sev uh, 50 degrees in Y and 10 degrees in the other one. So I realized I had to do something with it to actually shift it so it's not cut off in the Li. And this is what the translation does. So the translation the here right now moves it 80 pixels in the X, uh, uh, in the X, minus 20 pixels in the Y, and minus 100 pixels in the Z direction. So again, we can play with these numbers in any which way to position it differently. So if I want to make it, for example, even smaller, I can shift it further up into Z space. That means the whole picture will, will shift to this direction here. So again, a minus 100 pixels will get us where we are. And this is how you can do it now. So if we put the focus on there again, uh, the hover again here on, then we have our cool 3D interface. This works in all the new browsers. It looks beautiful in, uh, in Chrome here, and it also looks beautiful in Nightly of Firefox. But other browsers that don't have any 3D, for example Opera now, will get the same effect they get here for the 3D one. So only the browsers that support it will get it. And that's one thing that we should always be thinking about. So let's recap. Alternative images, uh, alternative text for images. Make a rollover effect that works for everybody and then actually add on to CSS for the others that make it better. So this still works without the transitions, it just doesn't look as smooth and it still works without the 3D. And as I put all the different uh, uh, prefixes in there, there, browsers of the future will support this without me having to change my CSS anymore. So have fun and try something out yourself.